Do you like gambling? That's right, you clicked on the right video. You see, teaching English is just like gambling. Let me explain. You see, this is a dartboard. This will determine everything about your life here as an English teacher in Japan. Bam, all 47 prefectures of Japan. W well, not really, but close enough. Which one will you teach in? Well, let's consult the dartboard. Let's see here. We know the prefecture now. What about the town? What about the school? What about your salary? You get where I'm going with this, right? You see, most people coming to Japan to teach English have zero control over where they end up. But for some, it gets even worse. Most people are probably applying to be an ALT, or assistant language teacher. It's one of the most common ways to come here because it's one of the most common jobs that bring people from overseas. And you'll most likely work in a school like this. But even after the dartboard decides your fate, you're still stuck with a lot of unknowns. If you ever take the time to learn about someone's experience as being an ALT, you'll start to notice that almost everyone has a different experience. And that's because the job description of being an ALT is very vague. You could, for example, teach classes all by yourself and have to do that five days a week. Or on the other hand, maybe you're just treated as a human tape recorder that has to repeat words to the class. Okay class, everyone repeat after me please. Ligma. Maybe you do both. Maybe you work at one school for the whole week. Maybe you work at three. Maybe you need a car because you live in the countryside. Maybe you live in the city. Maybe you, you get the idea, right? The point I'm trying to convey is that a lot of people really won't know what they're signing up for. And you really don't get this information until sometimes a month before you come here. Some people won't even get this information until the day they step off the plane and arrive in Japan. And every company operates a little differently too. And there are a lot of ALT dispatch companies. But any ALT dispatch company that hires from overseas often shares the same problems we just talked about. And this includes the JET program, the Japan English Teaching Program. But if I had to make a tier list, I'd probably still put the JET program at the top. However, it's like comparing rotten apples to rotten oranges. It's all still rotten. And if you didn't know, JET is the only government-sponsored dispatch program. But getting into JET can be pretty difficult, and their selection process seems to be pretty random. However, if you can get in, I do think it is the best of all of the ALT programs. However, this doesn't make it immune to the previous issues we were just talking about. The benefits of JET are usually that they pay for your plane ticket, they generally have a higher pay rate, usually they're more organized, usually. Otherwise, the other dispatch companies pretty much cover the same benefits, maybe like daily commute reimbursement, subsidized housing, helping you find housing, things along that nature. But keep in mind, and this is important, these are not guaranteed. Again, these are completely random. Just because employee A and employee B work within the same exact company does not mean they have the same exact benefits. If employee A works in the countryside, then maybe the company helps him get a car. Maybe he has subsidized housing. If employee B works in the city, then maybe he doesn't get a car, but maybe he also gets subsidized housing. And maybe employee C gets the middle finger. And again, none of these are guaranteed, they're just examples. But obviously that's part of the problem, you simply just have no idea. So remember, if you have questions, consult the dartboard. Something else I want to make clear, just because if you spend enough time online, you'll see both sides of the story, is that just because it's a gamble, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed to have a bad time. That's the whole point of it being a gamble. You could, for example, have an amazing time living here and working as an ALT. Maybe you work in an amazing city that you love and their schedule is great and you're okay with the pay. But just remember that there are two sides to the coin and the other side sucks. If you live in a city that you don't like, have little to no support, and you feel overwhelmed, it's not going to be such a good time. And it's completely possible to just feel indifferent and think, hey, it's just another job. But the problem is that it's a gamble, so a lot of people just have no idea what they're getting into. 
And this is part of the reason why the turnover rate for being an ALT is so high. It's one of the biggest reasons why the job of being an ALT might not be for everyone. And it's also important to note that the role of being an ALT has been stagnant for years. Wages haven't gone up or moved anywhere in years. Every year that you work as an ALT, you're actually just losing money because of inflation. It's why a lot of people say being an ALT is only good temporarily or just to get you into the country. It's not really something you build a career from, it's more of just a stepping stone. But we've been talking about the good and bad of being an ALT, so who should come to Japan and be an ALT? Well, really that's up to you. I'm not here to be a gatekeeper and tell you what you should and shouldn't do. If everything you've heard so far sounds okay to you, then by all means, I think you should do it. From my experience, the most successful ALTs are usually the people that don't get homesick, are generally very outgoing and can adapt well to any situation they're placed in. It also doesn't hurt to be financially stable before coming here. Remember that the yen is very weak, so the exchange rate to USD if you need to pay student loans back home is kind of a nightmare if you rely on the money that you're earning here in Japan. And just remember that when you're not on the clock as an English teacher, you're still living here in Japan. Everything we just talked about is like half the battle. Remember that you're still in a new country, far from home, experiencing a new culture, language, environment, you get the idea. The addition of all of that new stress, plus the possibilities of your work life as an ALT, really start to add up and become overwhelming. So it becomes a bit of a sink or swim situation. So I just wanna provide you with all the information I can so you can make an informed decision. Personally, my experience as an ALT has been so-so. The company I ended up working for is not so good and overall predatory towards its employees. But the school that I work at is very good. It's wonderful. The students are great. All the staff that I work with are amazing. So it's a bit bittersweet for me. And also I feel pretty poor most of the time and I don't even have high expenses. I simply just don't get paid much. But the flip side is that I do have a lot of free time at work especially during the summer and winter breaks when I get paid to literally do nothing for eight hours a day because we have no students. So it's a bit of a trade-off, but I do have to stay at my desk. You'll hear the term desk warming a lot. This is because for the most part, there isn't really work from home during these times. You literally have to come to the school, sit at your desk and do nothing. Actually, that's yet another gamble. Uh, some companies will pay you to sit there and do nothing for the summer break. Some won't. They'll just say, hey, good luck. Figure out your finances for that month because we're not going to pay you. And at some point, you're going to be desk warming. I think as an ALT, it's kind of inevitable. I've talked to plenty of ALTs, and I don't think I've ever heard of one that hasn't had to do desk warming at some point. So if you do have to desk warm, what I would recommend doing is mostly studying Japanese, but also anything else that's working towards that next step, right? Practice coding, or maybe you wanna to go to graduate school, so start looking and applying. Anything that's working towards that next goal, but also keep in mind that if your goal is to stay in Japan long-term, you're probably going to need to speak Japanese. By the way, whether or not your English teacher that you work with speaks good English is also a gamble. Oh, but they're an English teacher, so they must speak good English, right? This depends on what level you're teaching at. I've noticed a lot of times that elementary school English teachers sometimes don't speak the best English and it's difficult to communicate with. So now you have all of the struggles that we were talking about earlier, Plus, it's difficult to communicate with your coworker. Uh, but this is more common in the countryside rather than in a big city. Uh, but again, just keep in mind that most placements happen somewhere in the countryside. So if you have big dreams of applying to be an ALT in Tokyo, then get in line and good luck. Actually, since we were just speaking about teaching level, can you guess what I'm gonna say next? That's right, it's completely a gamble. Whether you work at an elementary school, a junior high school, or a high school, you have no idea. Better consult the dartboard. Keep in mind that you might teach at one or all three of these in the same week. You simply just don't know. Anyways, I hope that you've learned something from this video. I tried not to be too negative, but I do wanna be realistic about what you could or could not be getting yourself into. But that's all for me from now. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff for the algorithm. I'll see you later. Bye.